Hello, my name is Lily Cast, and I am Upper Philadelphia's Scholar in Residence. It is my pleasure today to introduce you to La Boheme, an opera with music by Giacomo Puccini and a libretto by Luigi Illica and Giuseppe Giacosa. In this short video, I will share a bit of background on La Boheme, which is one of the most popular works in the entire operatic repertoire. I will also point out some moments for you to listen out for in the opera's score and what you can expect from Opera Philadelphia's current production, creatively directed by Yuval Sharon. The source material for the opera's libretto is Henri Muget's 1851 novel, Scène de la Vie de Bohème, a series of short stories that zoom in on the lives of artists and philosophers living in Paris's Latin Quarter during the mid 19th century. They struggle with the cold in their unheated apartments, exhaustion from producing their creative work, and frustration that their landlord expects them to pay their rent on time. Despite the hurdles these men encounter, they persevere, amusing themselves by figuring out creative ways to deal with their daily lives. The quotidian troubles of a group of friends may sound to us like better material for a sitcom than for a tragic opera, but the insistently optimistic essence of Murger's Bohemians, even in the face of tragedy, inspired not one, but two simultaneously composed operatic settings. The composer Ruggiero Leoncavallo, famous today for his opera Pagliacci, thought of the idea first, but Giacomo Puccini stole his thunder, managing to write and produce his opera before Leon Cavallo had a chance. Puccini's La Boheme continues to overshadow Leon Cavallo's. Opera Philadelphia has never produced Leon Cavallo's version, but our current production of Puccini's will be the 10th time we have mounted the opera since 1975. In fact, this opera is the most performed work in Opera Philadelphia's repertoire and the most performed work in many other opera companies around the world. La Boheme's popularity stems from Puccini's obsession with refining Muget's slightly unwieldy collections of stories into a concise, dramatic arc. Puccini closely supervised his librettists, Ilica and Giacosa, who became quite annoyed by how many times he asked them to rewrite large parts of the libretto, into writing a text that was alternately true to minute details of the characters' daily lives, and also at times wildly poetic. This allowed Puccini to demonstrate his skill in writing more realistic, chatty lines of music for his characters, which was a more modern approach, while at the same time, in other moments, drawing on the long, sweeping, vocally impressive and memorable musical lines for which more traditional Italian opera was known. The opera's plot centers around four roommates, the poet Rodolfo, the painter Marcello, the philosopher Colline, and the musician Chonard. In Act One, listen for the orchestra's imitation of fire burning and then dying down in the stove as the men joke around and try to keep warm in their apartment on Christmas Eve. As Rodolfo falls in love at first sight with his neighbor, the seamstress Mimi, we hear memorable tunes that come to define the couple and their love throughout the opera. When Rodolfo brings Mimi out with his friends into a noisy crowd of street vendors, children, and townspeople, Marcello reunites with his fiery ex-girlfriend, the singer Musetta, at the cafe Momus. Musetta charms the audience with the waltz she sings, just as she charms Marcello, and Marcello takes her back. Although the story has the makings of a comedy thus far, the tragic elements unfold in Acts 3 and 4. Mimi has tuberculosis, a fatal illness which in the 19th century was thought to have resulted from the cold and damp conditions often suffered by the poor. Mimi's worsening cough drives Rodolfo to despair, and the two decide to part ways in the spring, when Mimi will be able to find a wealthier man who could pay for her medical care. Martello and Musetta also part ways again, since Musetta won't stop flirting and Marcello can't stop getting jealous of the other men. The resulting quartet, 
with Mimi and Rodolfo singing along with plaintive melodies as Musetta and Martello scream insults at each other is the height of tragic comedy. When the final act opens, it is Christmas Eve again, and Musetta unexpectedly returns to the roommate's apartment, bringing Mimi with her. Mimi is dying, and her friends sell their belongings to buy her items to comfort her in her final hours. Rodolfo stays with her, and they reminisce about their first meeting. The music here emphasizes their nostalgia by repeating melodies we recognize from happy scenes in Act One. The opera ends with Rodolfo's anguished cry as he realizes that Mimi has died. At least, this is how the opera usually ends. However, Opera Philadelphia's production this season does things a bit differently. Directed by the innovative American director Yuval Sharon, this production is played in reverse order. We hear Act Four from the beginning to end, followed by all of Act Three, then Act Two, and Act One without an intermission. In terms of the story, this means we see first Mimi die, then the couples break up, then the Christmas Eve revelry at the Café Momus, and in the final moments of our performance, Mimi and Rodolfo meet and fall in love. The backwards order, similar to a series of flashbacks in a movie, is tied together by a newly added character called the Wanderer. The Wanderer watches the drama unfold alongside us, although he, like many regular opera goers, is already familiar with it. In short bursts of spoken English dialogue, interspersed at the beginnings and ends of the acts, which are all sung in Italian, the Wanderer reflects on how things came to be, and fundamentally, whether love is worth the cost of loss. Yuval Sharon's interpretation is colored by the COVID-19 pandemic, which profoundly affected not only the landscape of physical and mental health in America and around the world, but also the performing arts. By beginning with death and ending with love, this production allows us, like the poor artists who populate the opera, to feel optimistic, even in the face of the hard facts of life. I hope you enjoy the performance.